road runs out. Our brake. Oh no. Someone's cut the brakes. Wait, I know what to do. Engine brake. It's working. It's working. Engine braking is using the engine to slow you down rather than your traditional friction brakes, your front brake and your rear brake. The way it works is when you roll off the throttle with the bike still in gear, on the intake stroke, when the engine's trying to suck in air, because the throttle is closed, the air intake is closed. There's a little butterfly valve in it that just shuts. So what's gonna happen when the piston moves down on the intake stroke to try pull in more air, it's going to pull a strong vacuum. Not quite a perfect vacuum, still a little bit of air gets in but a strong vacuum. But what the piston wants to do, it wants to pull in the air-fuel mixture, suck it down, and then come back up and compress it. But what you're doing is you're not giving it any air or fuel. So when it tries to pull down and it's just getting a vacuum, it's going to be slowed down. So that sucking force of the piston being trying to be sucked back up as it's being pulled down is what slows your bike down. So when your bike is still in gear, the net effect of this is when you roll off, the bike is gonna slow down without you having to touch any of the brakes. And this is good for a couple of reasons. So obviously it's gonna save your brakes. Um, it gives you a lot more control, because say you're in traffic and you just, you're using the engine braking for the most part to slow you down. You're not gonna to get to a complete stop because your bike will stall. But if you're just going from 40 miles an hour down to 30, you can roll off. And what you still have then is complete control of your regular brakes. So if you need to stop in an emergency, you could do it. So the strength of your engine brake, it depends on quite a number of factors. First and foremost, it's gonna be what type of engine you have. So if you've got a four-stroke engine or if you have a two-stroke engine. Four strokes produce significantly more engine braking, which for the most part is not gonna be important. But if you're swapping from your dirt bike to your racing bike, it's good to be aware, but primarily the thing that you're going to notice on your bike is what gear you're in and what RPM you're at. So if I take this up to 70 in second gear and I roll off, it's quite significant, the force, I can feel it. But now if I shift up into, let's say, fifth gear, bring it up to 70, and now roll off, it's much more gradual and relaxed. There's a lot of myth around the damage engine braking can do to your engine. The amount of wear caused by n everyday normal engine braking is so insignificant. But then where the difference is, because when you roll off, you're going to put all that force because you're still in gear through your clutch. So your clutch will wear out a little bit quicker, but... The cost of your brake pads over the course of the lifetime of your bike will be significantly more if you're just pulling in the clutch and braking every single time. Over the course of a bike, as so long as you're not putting too much load, which we'll get to in a second, onto the engine, it's gonna be negligible and it'll give you so much more control. One of the most common uses for engine braking day to day is gonna be when you're coming to a set of lights like this. So already I'm slowing down without touching the brake. The one thing you do have to be careful though of engine braking in traffic is the fact that until I touch my brake, my rear brake light isn't gonna turn on. So if you look around, you'll see a lot of techniques for fixing this. Some people will just give the rear brake a few taps as they're beginning to brake. Other people will just drag it a little bit. So their rear brake light lights up without actually engaging the brake fully. So as well as in traffic, on long downhill, the engine braking is great. So rather than sitting on your front brake or your rear brake, um, overheating it and making you lose braking power, just sit in the lower gear and, and engine brake your way down. So all that heat that would normally be generated and go into your brakes is just going into the engine. So I mentioned ways that engine braking can be bad for you. One of the big ones is if you're shifting while engine braking. So if you're rolling off and you shift down into a smaller gear, so say you go from third into second, without bringing the revs up to match, what's called rev matching, that can kind of have negative effects and a lot extra wear on your bike. So I bring this up to 60 miles an hour. Now I'm going to leave the throttle and I'll take my hand off, okay? But if I click down, watch the revs. They keep being pulled up. The way you fix that is what's called blipping the throttle. As your engine braking getting ready to shift down, 
what you're going to do is as you pull in the clutch, you're going to open the throttle a little bit to bring the RPM up to hopefully match what when you shift down the gear will be. So what it's going to look like if we're watching my right hand over here, it's... And it sounds pretty cool too. And you can do it all the way down, just aiding the engine just that little bit. So if you're at, in third gear, at 6,000 RPM, you know if you shift down a second, it's going to jump up to about 9,000, give or take, depending on your bike. So what you got to do is just bring those RPMs up while the clutch is engaged. So it at least gets as close as possible. Very few are perfect, but you see a lot of these newer quick shifters, when you downshift, the bike will do an auto blip. So it will automatically flip the throttle for you. And speaking of tech, if you look at stuff like MotoGP in it, they have variable engine braking. So what they will do is when they close the throttle on corners, they can set how perfectly closed that butterfly valve is. So if they want more engine braking or less, they can just change how fully closed that is. So a danger with engine braking is what's called shift lock. We all know about redline on the bikes. If the force gets too high, if you, when you shift down, especially if you're going down multiple gears and riding aggressively, what can happen is it can exceed redline or even get very close to it. And what can happen is because your rear wheel to skit or slide or just lock up until you either shift back up a gear or pull in the clutch and let the wheels start rolling again. Or the RPMs come down by themselves, but that could be a few seconds and you'd be on the floor by then. There's only two ways to really aid yourself if you're getting into that danger zone of clicking down multiple gears. The first, nowhere is safe to bring the revs up to without causing your rear wheel to lock up. The other is the mechanical solution. So on this bike, which is a uh, Suzuki GSX-R 750, it's fitted with a slipper clutch. What the slipper clutch does, what the name implies, it disengages the clutch just a little bit to let the rear wheel slip. So if the rear wheel tries to lock up, the back torque through the clutch into the engine is too high. The slipper clutch will actually cause the clutch to disengage to allow the wheel to roll until the RPMs come back down where the clutch will re-engage as normal. So it's an extra little safety thing. A lot of modern bikes have them, even the current Ninja 300 has it. So if you've been riding for any length of time, you already know what engine braking is. Really, the foundation of this is for absolute beginners, people who haven't ridden bikes or driven manual cars before. But the big takeaway from this for all riders is just dispelling those myths that it's not bad for your bike so long as you keep it within limits. So long as you don't let the RPMs exceed redline or get, you know, if you keep them away from it better again, it'll keep you safer when you're out because you don't need to be on the brakes already. So you can be slowing down, preparing for light, and if someone pulls out in front of you, you still get your other two brakes there ready to go. It'll make you faster in racing because you can brake harder into each corner because you can be combining the engine braking with your regular brakes. Also, the thing a lot of people care about, it's going to save you money in brake pads. Because I don't know about you, I have one on the back, two on the front, and they're like $40 a pair. It adds up. Now that the video is over, I just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed after the last Moto Education Gold video. I don't know what these are called, but we went from 40-something subscribers to well over 100. To well over 100. This is how many takes I have to do. You don't get to see this in the video because I cut it all out. Um, but thank you guys. 